All right, here we are in 6.2. Uh, this section is going over just briefly the differences between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. We're in the unit about cells. Um, so there are two major categories of cells. Uh, as I just said, there are eukaryotic cells um, and then there also are prokaryotic cells. And you've probably heard of these before. And the thing to remember about eukaryotic cells is they are cells that have internal membranes or membrane-bound organelles um, or membrane-bound structures. And most of the life on Earth that you are probably familiar with, um, like animals and plants and fungi and maybe protists too, um, those are all organisms that have eukaryotic cells. So since you are an animal, you have eukaryotic cells, and that might be one way that you remember that. Um, the other type of cells are found in bacteria as well as archaea. And so those are the two types of cells that we see. Viruses, slightly different situation. We're not going to get into them technically not living. Hmm. Um, but I do want to say one thing, um, put in a plug for Radiolab. I don't know if you listen to Radiolab, but you should if you don't. Um, and there was recently an episode about uh, how eukaryotic cells formed according to the theory of endosymbiosis. And it's really worth a listen. It, it kind of tells a great story um, outlines it in a way that's very accessible, makes it more kind of uh, interesting than just reading about this idea of cells um, entering into other cells and living inside of other cells. Um, so give it a listen if you have time. Uh, I just want to point out, just to give you a sense of, in terms of the organization of life, how 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 many different types of organisms are eukaryotic, whereas um, how many are prokaryotic? So there are three domains when we look at the organization or the um, phylogenetic tree of life. Uh, and so you've heard of bacteria. Uh, you may have heard of archaea. That's also, it's like bacteria, but actually different in a lot of important ways. And then we have the domain um, eukaryota. And in that domain, that's where you, you see the organisms that you probably think of when you think of biology, right? And that's actually a really small part. If you look at all the different organisms, animals are just this one little part. And in that, like we are somewhere in there, but we are not a big part of life. Um, there's fungi, right? So mushrooms and um, molds. Then we have plants. And then there's a bunch of other organisms that um, you may or may not have heard of before. So I just wanted to point that out so that all these organisms that are in this kind of light brown color have eukaryotic cells. And so they're organized in one part of um, the phylogenetic tree, whereas these other two um, are prokaryotic cells and they have a slightly different structure. But regardless of that, one thing to point out is that they all, as far as this theory is concerned, um, come from a common ancestor, right? So all cells descended uh, from one particular type of cell, and that's always really interesting to think about. And for that reason, we see a lot of similarities between cells, right? So there are differences between these groups, there are differences between your cells and the cells of like a mushroom that you had on your pizza, but there are things that are really similar about them. So for example, <clears throat> all cells will have some kind of membrane, plasma membrane around them. Right, so the on the uh, on, at least on the outside, even prokaryotic cells have a membrane on the outside of their um, structure, outside of their cell. Cells will also have cytosol, which is like the semi-fluid juice inside of the cells. Right, everything that happens in cells happens in an aqueous environment, more or less, um, and it's that aqueous environment that actually keeps the plasma membrane holding together the way that it does. Um, and we'll get more into that later. But so all cells have a cytosol. Um, all cells have some kind of genetic information. Um, so you're organized typically into chromosomes. Um, in eukaryotic cells, the DNA is combined with proteins, whereas in prokaryotic cells, the DNA is usually not associated with any proteins. Um, and we can refer to that as um, naked DNA, actually. And the last thing that you see in all cells is ribosomes. So even prokaryotic cells have ribosomes. Ribosomes are not membrane bound. They're made out of ribosomal RNA. Um, in prokaryotic cells, the ribosomes are smaller, but they still are there. And in eukaryotic cells, you can have larger ribosomes and they uh, can be free ribosomes or they can be attached to another organelle.
So those are the, the, the kind of key characteristics that we see in all cells. And now let's look at some of the differences between uh, cells. So prokaryotic cells, uh, what you need to know about those is that they don't have a nucleus, right? Um, they, and they don't have any uh, membrane-bound organelles. What they do have instead is a nucleoid of DNA. So that's that naked DNA that uh, might be a ring, might be kind of like this cluster of DNA. They definitely do have the genetic material that can be passed on, that can be shared between prokaryotic cells, but it is not packaged and protected inside of a nucleus, inside of a membrane, like we see in eukaryotic cells. Um, <clears throat> they also, like I said before, they do have a cell membrane around their cells. Um, and they also, I guess it should be put in here, they also have ribosomes. Um, I guess I said that on the previous slide. Um, in eukaryotic cells, uh, in contrast, they have their DNA or their genetic information in the nucleus. Um, they have a bunch of membrane-bound organelles. They are much more complex. They're typically larger. Um, prokaryotic cells are usually somewhere between 1 to 100 micrometers, whereas eukaryotic cells... So I just say 100, 1 to 10 micrometers. And eukaryotic cells will be, you know, they can be on the order of 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers. I really need to work on my handwriting here. Uh, so, so eukaryotic cells are larger, and that makes sense because uh, having organelles that uh, essentially uh, separate or compartmentalize Uh, the the chemical processes, this the, the the metabolic processes, whatever the cell is doing, allows it to do more complex uh, processes, and by uh, default, they can grow bigger. They can be more complex. Uh, so, eukaryotic cells can also be animal cells. They can be plant cells. They can be fungi. Right. And there are differences between those, and um, we're going to focus on the differences between plant and animal cells. And that has to do with the different uh, structures that they have uh, between those two cells. So this cell right down here that we have is an animal cell. Whereas this picture here, you have um, a transmission electron microscope image of a uh, bacterium. And here is a kind of diagram, uh, a drawn diagram of those cells. So... Different cells, if we, if we, even if we just look at eukaryotic cells, different cells look different, right? There are similarities between them. They have nuclei. They will have these membrane-bound organelles, but their structure does change depending on what their function is, right? So like neurons tend to be kind of like longer cells, whereas um, if you look at like an epithelial cell in the intestines that has a particular structure to it, um, that's, that looks very different from the neuron. It's not as long, it's more kind of circular, and it has um, kind of like these cilia part to it. Um, so this is kind of a theme in biology, that the structure of a cell affects its, or structure affects function, right? And we see that in cells as well. And so I'm going to show you uh, some diagrams of an animal cell, and it's like a general structure. Like, not all animal cells look like that. Neurons will look very different. A white blood cell will also look very different. However, it's useful to look at these structures to kind of get an idea of what the organelles are and what the cell might look like. The same goes for plant cells. They will all look a little bit different. So... If we look at the animal cell, right, so not all animal cells, for example, will have uh, this kind of long flagellum structure, right? You might not see that. Or you might not see these microvilli uh, on all cells. You'll see that in intestinal cells, but you won't see that on a red blood cell, for example. Um, but, you know, this diagram kind of shows you the, like, the ideas of what might be in a cell, right? And we can, you can take a moment to look at this in detail, and we're going to talk about what each part's of um, the cell does, but you'll notice that there's a, typically a large kind of nucleus in the middle, or or it does may not be in the middle, it might be on the side of the cell, but it's usually surrounded by this um, endoplasmic kind of uh, layers of membrane, a Golgi apparatus. Um, you'll see that there are always some mitochondria. Some cells will have a lot of mitochondria, some will have few. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, what else do I want to point out here? Uh, 
Uh, cells have a cytoskeleton, which is essentially a system of proteins and um, structures that give the cell its shape, as well as allow for materials to be transported around the cell, as well as organize the organelles and keep them in place where they're supposed to be. Um, it's actually really remarkable um, how that works, and we'll get into that into detail. Um, so yeah, this is, this is an animal cell schematically represented, and again, remember these are eukaryotic cells. Um, here we have a plant cell, um, and immediately you'll notice there are some differences and there are some similarities, right? Um, similarities are that you have a nucleus, you still have this endoplasmic uh, system here, you still have a Golgi body somewhere nearby, there's a mitochondria, there always are mitochondria in plant cells, um, but you know it has a different shape to it, it has this kind of rigid looking uh, cell wall, and it also has these interesting green uh, chloropl chloroplasts. So you can see that, you know, depending on the type of cell, whether it's a plant cell, whether it's an animal cell, um, and once we get into the different types of animal cells, you'll see that there's differences between them. Nonetheless, there are some significant similarities between them. So that's just kind of like the overview of cells and their structure, and we're going to talk about each of their different types of uh, organelles in terms of their kind of general functionality. Um, but before we do, let's do a practice question. So here we have a practice question, uh, just a quick multiple choice question. Uh, which of the following would be present in a prokaryotic cell? Again, always read the questions carefully because um, this, the, it's really easy to get thrown off by the either present or not present or yes or no. Um, so take a moment to figure out your answer and then I will give you my answer. So, uh, if we go through this, um, we will remember that prokaryotic cells are cells that do not have membrane bound organelles. Well, this handwriting is getting out of control. And so, um, let's go from the bottom. We know that chloroplasts have a membrane around them. We know the endoplasmic reticulum has a membrane around them but we know that ribosomes have no membrane um, and they are definitely found in prokaryotic cells as well as eukaryotic cells. We can rule out uh, the mitochondria. In fact, um, the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and chloroplasts have quite extensive membranes um, in them uh, and those are not found in prokaryotic cells. So that's all for now. Um, the next section that we're gonna get into is all about the uh, nucleus and how the nucleus is used to produce proteins. So look forward to that and we'll see you then.